This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying, lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him, I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I'm Ambassador Chantor Davis. For those of you who do not know me, today is August the 14th of 2019. It is 1140 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your hearts and minds together and want to call with me, for there is no time and there is no space in the spirit. Heavenly Father, we will come before you thanking you that we are alive for such a time as this, Father God. Thank you that we are awake because you sustained us, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you are ever-present help in a time of trouble. Thank you for being a good and loving and faithful God. You are all wise. You are all knowing. You are all sufficient. You are unchangeable, unparalleled, unprecedented, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you are inexhaustible. You are our supply. You are our source. Our reliance is up on you, Father God. Be exalted for you are the rock of ages in the lily of valley, Father God. I thank you that you strengthen and sustain us. You guard and you guide us. You beautify the meek, Father God. You are tried and true, and there is no wisdom, no knowledge, no counsel against you. We worship you, Father God, in the beauty of your holiness, Father God, for you are truly worthy of all praise, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you did not give us what we deserve, Father God. Thank you that you came that we might know you and know you in truth, Father God, that we might know you in reality, Father God. We may know you in eternity, Father God. Thank you in the name of Jesus that you drew us unto yourself and called us out of darkness and out of obscurity, Father God. In the name of Jesus, be exalted, Father God. Help us to worship you in the beauty of your holiness, awaken in us a pure heart and a pure mind that we will have pure expression of you in all things that we do, Father God. Pure pure prayers, pure speeches, Father God. Pure teaching, Father God. Pure, pure love, Father God. Pure ex exaltation of you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, pure mercy, Father God. Let every expression that we have of you be pure in the name of Christ Jesus. Father God, we come before you thinking that you for the strength for the day. We receive the strength and the grace we need for this day, Father God. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Blood, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of our head to the tip of our toes to the full binding up and dispossessing of all darkness, Father God, to the casting out of every unclean thing and everything that does not look like you. We take every thought and every the high thing that exalts itself against your true knowledge and we lead it away captive when we command it to commit to Christ, Father God. Submit to Christ in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Blood, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you have prophesied goodness over our life, Father God. Your plans for us are good and not evil. Plans of hope and future and expected in it. We decree you expecting it over our day, over our way, Father God, over our ministry, over our marriage, over our children, over our endeavors, over our destinies, and all that they are and all that they ever will be in you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we prophesy over our mouths, Father God, that we have the tongue of the learned and lips of knowledge, Father God. We speak right words in due season and how good and forcible all those right words, Father God. We thank you that out of our belly flows rivers of the living water, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we have a mouth seasoned with grace full of salt that we know how to answer every man. We thank you that by your spirit you have given us a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, say, nor can they resist, Father God. You said you give wisdom to all who ask liberally, Father God. We ask you for more wisdom this day, and we rebuke all earthly, sinful, and devilish wisdom, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask that you give to us spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may always know the hope of our calling in the riches of the glory of the inheritance in Christ Jesus, Father God. In the name of Jesus, grant us great discernment, Father God, of the spirits, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, help us have true expression of you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we bind mercy and truth about our neck and write it up on the table of our heart, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you are with us and for us and no one was successful to be against us. We thank you that you contend with those who contend with us. You fight against those who fight against us. You see the righteous and the grand tribulation to those who trouble us, Father God. Trouble our trouble, those who trouble us in the spirit and physical realm, Father God. You are our great contender in the name of Christ Jesus. You said those who gathered against us would not be by you and what you would cause them to do is fall for our sake. So we command them to fall according to thy word. We decree and declare that every tongue that is risen against us in judgment, every tongue that is uttered, muttered, and chanted, in any tongue, any language, Father God, in any realm, we decree and declare those words null and void concerning us and we command them back into the bosom of the one who sent them, Father God. Let them eat the fruit of their own thoughts, the fruit of their own intents, the fruit of their own words, Father God. Let it turn down all they built in the spiritual kingdom, Father God, by far, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Blood, Father God. We thank you that you who have begun this good work in us will continue to do they have Christ. We thank you that the entrance of your word has given us light, Father God, and the steps of these good men and women are ordered of the Lord this day, Father God. So we thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, Father God, and we thank you that you know the way of the righteous. So we thank you, Father God, and we submit and yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit and the direction of our paths this day, Father God. For we acknowledge you in all of our ways, Father God. We bless you for this right now word, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I speak for cultivated hearts and ears, Father God. Great receptivity, Father God. 
Habandok, Father God, every spirit that would detour, delay, Father God, or confuse or baffle the understanding of those who would hear this word, Father God, of encouragement. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we bless you, Father God. Let be, be exalted in and through us this day, Father God, for our reliance is upon you. We know you are faithful. We know you are true, Father God. We bless you. And in the name of Christ Jesus, we seal this prayer. And we say amen. Oh, y'all. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, messing with this equipment this morning because it, it wanted to really uh, be a distraction uh, from the various words the Lord would give me. There are many words of encouragement. I have some dreams and visions I'm going to give to. Um, some I sat on literally when I was on J1J1, I received certain things. And sometimes um, you can get information. And because you start to see some of what the Lord showed, you start to happen in the news that you'll go and deliver it when he ain't finished. And I couldn't do that. But um, be encouraged to stay beloved because things are about to get rough. Things are about to get very rough in this place because of the perversion. The cup of iniquity is indeed filling up. Many of you have already been through so much. I've said this before. Have any of you ever realized when Christ Jesus was on a mountain, he spoke to the Lord. He said, glorify me with the glory I once had when I knew you before when I was with you. And the Lord and, and God, the Father, spoke back saying, I have glorified you and I will glorify you again. Did you ever thought of what he meant by the glory he had before? The, whatever the true form he had. He came in the flesh, but he has a, a form that he had in heaven before he came here. Likewise, we had a form in heaven before we were sent here. He said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Okay? He was somewhere with us. That is a really deeper meaning when he says, depart from me. I never knew you. Did he know you before you came here? Because if he knew you before you came here, you will meet him there again. Because the predestined paths, no matter if you went through turmoil, went through rape, went through promiscuity, went through homosexuality, went through drug addiction, went through homelessness, you're going to still end up. And people don't understand the end he's speaking about is not necessarily a place. It is a state of being. Will you be in the state he predestined when he returns? Okay, catch that. Will you be in the state that you're supposed to be in? He said, when we see him, will we be like him? That's the state we are to be in. It ain't about being in a particular state, even though the Lord will lead you to states, to places, to people, to be at the right place at the right time. It's about the spiritual state of being within you. The spiritual, you know, many discipleship. Getting off the constant altar of repentance and moving into discipleship and service to where serving the Lord cost you. I feel for you who have never had any stress in your life. Family has always been there for you. Nobody has rejected you. You've gotten what you want. You ain't missed no meals. You have yet been tried. You've had simplicity. And simplicity, oh, I heard you, Lord. Simplicity is an enemy to those of the cross. What's simplicity? You never go through anything. There's never been, and I mean, it's a fiery trial. You are tried by the fire. You are proven by the fire. How much you have gone through, that's why you should never judge people when you see them going through total hell, thinking they're being judged for something they did wrong. That's the difference between a strange fire and the fire of God. The fire of God comes to try and prove you for the work. The fire that you got because you made the wrong decision and went your own way comes to kill you. That's why people say all things work together for my good because I love the Lord and called according to his purpose. But people like to stop it that all things work together for my good. No. If you are in Christ and you are moving in obedience, all things come to work together for your good. But if you are outside of his will and you don't belong to him, everything that's coming to get you in fire coming to kill you, coming to destroy you, steal, kill, and destroy, steal from you, kill you, and destroy you. The fire of God proves you for the work. Fire that come through, uh, God, it's a whole nother message. The fire that comes for, uh, the fire that comes for, from the redemption is not the same fire as reciprocity. You got what you gave out. You get whooped by the fire of reciprocity. It comes to kill you. The fire of God comes to refine you and perfect you. And how much you go through can be a tale of the call that's on you. That's why y'all don't can't judge people when y'all see them going through stuff. They got a tailor-made fire that's based upon 
them having to do what he called them to do. It's kind of like, Pastor Darby said it best, it's kind of like still, depending on its purpose, is depending on how much pressure will have to be added to it. Think about that. If you're just going to use a steel fork, fork, it ain't got to be that strong. You can even bend it. You're just using it to eat. But what if that metal or that steel was meant to hold up a building? The pressure is going to be a lot greater. Likewise in your body and likewise with people who serve God. Depending on the call upon their life, their fire and their pressure will be greater. That's why you don't compete with nobody. I like it that he said it best. You don't have the hell or grace. You don't have the grace or hell to be who they called to be. Meaning you, you haven't gone through anything they've gone through for the glory to rest upon them the way it is. So this message is to encourage you, and it's short. I got a lot of short ones. I can't put them together because you have to go by obedience. They can't be together. It's also for those of you who are pressing forth and you, everybody seems like they just moving, having a good time, kicking it. They going out to eat, they traveling, they get in their houses and you just get another degree of fire, another degree of fire. I don't know how many of you saw that message of degrees that I did, but please go listen to it. That was a beautiful revelation. By degrees, you ascend. Another degree of temperature. You go through more. You're ascending. You're becoming more glorified and they look like they just skating. For those of you who seem like it's one thing after another, when you know it's in righteousness, that's the difference between a disciple and people in the world. And not just those who say they're saved. It's those who are saved, but they have not become disciples. They have, begin, they have yet to begin to lay themselves out for Christ to where it cost them. They're just constantly getting and want everything given to them. You, when you sign up for discipleship, you sign up for suffering. You must know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And until you have fellowship of suffering, you don't know him yet. You have fellowship to be with that person at all times. To know him in the power of his resurrection. But the fellowship of his suffering is what gets us to glory. The power of his res resurrection gave us the right to redemption. I heard you, Lord. But the fellowship of the suffering makes us partake of his glory. I hear you, Lord. You, you catching it? You got to go through the fellowship of his suffering. The power of the resurrection is how you, you got to invite to come. Come. But the fellowship of his suffering means you going to be glorified and raised and reign with him. The, the, the life of discipleship. You sign up to suffer. Because it's a fellowship of his suffering. Whether it's heartbreak, rejection of whole families, talked about, lied on, cheated on, stole from, any form of addiction. Because the enemy start on some of you early. He got to get you early. Oh, that's a whole other revelation. I got to stay on course. Just like they knew who Christ was. They knew who he was. They said, we have seen his star. And they read it. Just like they read his star, they read yours. They know who you are. But they don't know your purpose. Because had they known what Jesus really came to do, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. They wouldn't have killed him if they knew it was going to free all mankind. They knew it was the son of God. They read his star. That's why the enemy, he thought he was winning when he took him to the cross. That's why he called Peter, get behind me, Satan. But yet he said to a Judas who betrayed him, friend, what for has thou come? Because that friend, that betrayer got him to the cross to finish his walk. Ooh. So this message. As for those of you who still press and you think because you're going through it, everybody seem to get. Oh, the flip-flop is coming. Those of you who have had simplicity and those of you who like to point and think that somebody, where's your God now? Or, oh, I thought God was so good. Or why are you going through so much? Or, or how are you going to tell me about God and I got more than you right now? This is for y'all. This is for you. Listen and listen close. The Lord had me deliver this shortly, just a little bit of it, in a short post some time ago, but he brought it back before me. And I want this to be a testimony that y'all spread, because we're going to tell the truth and shame the devil. And you ain't never been through nothing. He, he gets no glory. People actually think he getting glory or he's more, the Lord is more pleased with us because we're delivering these messages. He's pleased in our belief and our press, even though we're going through the fire. He said it pleased him to bruise Christ. Look at him. He ain't, he holding strong. 
He was all flesh, all man, and all God. He had to be forsaken, and that's something he never had. He had never been out of the presence of the Father. And that had to be the most grievous for him because he had been in his presence and had been with him from the beginning. So that we would never have to be separated from him. That's why he asked him, why have you forsaken me? He had to be forsaken so that we would not be. He had to cover all in all. Jesus is all in all. Only you can determine what you allow him to be to you. This message, the glory in your used to. How you got those that come around. Oh, she say she love Christ. Or he say he love Christ. I remember when that dude, I, you know, you know you're saying the black folk, they say nigga. I remember when he used to do this and used to do that. That dude used to be out there worse than me. Oh, girl, that girl used to be a thot. Didn't she used to drink? Didn't you see how she used to leave the house? I remember when she was out there strung out on them drugs. She was higher than me. That used to. That used to. That used to. For we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Transformed from faith to faith, the glory to glory, into the image, to where the things we used to do, we don't do anymore. Therein is your glory. Therein is your glory. The family members that come around and want to hold you familiar because they remember what you used to do. Y'all going to proceed no further. All of y'all just trying to beat people up for their used to. They used to sell their body. They used to be addicted to drugs. They used to lie, cheat, and steal. They used to be a, a, a fornicated. They used to be a homosexual. They used to be high. They used to be turned out. And you love to remind them of what they used to. And then you like to torment when they start going through a trial. And you immediately assume it's because they did something wrong. There are trials and fire of glorification. And then there's fire of reciprocity. We're going to say fire of redemption and fire of reciprocity. When you're getting fired because you just done evil to people. He said, if you suffer for good's sake, then pleased and glorious are you. The power of God rests up on you. The glory is in your used to. But the enemy is hiding in the shame and you're not glorifying God. Therefore, you don't get to ascend any higher. They don't even know what the Lord has brought you from. Where is his glory? Now, the people who knew you, they know you ain't the same. They coming around with that old darkness trying to put out your new light. But just as in the beginning, I heard you, Lord. The light dwelt among men and the darkness that could not comprehend it. That's what they mean. He couldn't overcome it. They comprehended not. It couldn't overcome. It can't be overcome. Just think about it. This room was pitch dark. And I just lit a match. The darkness cannot overcome that match. They bring an old darkness trying to overcome your new light. The devil's a lie. The glory is in your used to. And all of those who testify of their used to are going to be glorified in it. Glorify him. I don't care what it was. The glory is in your used to. So the moment. Ah, I hear you. Let me get to the scripture. Let me get to the scripture. Let me at least read this part here. Okay, first Peter 12 and 14, beloved. Okay, beloved, that's you. Thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, that is to prove you, prove you, prepare you for the use to be fit, as though some strange, strange thing has happened. He's telling you, don't act like this is strange, expect it, and when you see it come and wink at it. Okay. But rejoice, rejoice when you see trials coming. In so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, we must know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Everybody who say they belong to Christ have done it, they don't know him yet. They have not become fellowshippers with his suffering. They want what's in his hand, not what's in his heart. They want all his goodness, not his shame. We ain't talking about the shame of this world. We walk in the shame that he went through. We bear the sufferings he bore. Huh? Salvation is free, huh? No, it costs you everything. It costs you you. He paid with blood for you to enter in. But this life is no longer yours. That's a cost. That's why you yoked. Though it's easy because he don't make you. Okay? 
In so much as you partakers of the Christ suffering, that, that when his glory shall be revealed, okay, you are partakers of his suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad and with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory. Okay, I'm going to read that part again. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ Jesus, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God, the spirit of glory and of God, the spirit of glory and of God resteth, resteth up on you. On their part, they evil speaking of you, but on the part, but on your part, he is glorified. He's glorified. He's glorified. So why are you struggling and you still serving God and they talking, oh, where's our God? Where's his God at? All that stuff they used to do coming back to get them. That's what they think. The glory of God rested upon you because you are now fellowshipping in his suffering. And only those who fellowship in his suffering going to be glorified with them when he comes. The glory in your used to. The glory in your used to. The glory in your used to. Start holding that used to up like a the, the, Jesus. Oh God, yes. Have Paul said, don't even ask me no more. I'm not even going to explain myself. I've heard of markings of Christ. The whippings that he took. This is a physical and a spiritual lashing. But he had physical ones. And those are coming and some people are already suffering them. You burn the marks of Christ on your spirit. And they up there laughing thinking it's because you something did wrong. The glory going to find them. Just like Shadrach uh, and uh, Meshach and Abednego. I like to call them Daniel and by their real names. The people that took them to throw them in the fire got burnt up. The ones that want to see you fail, he going to deliver you from the expectations of your enemies. The ones that expect to see you without. The ones that expect to see you fall. He going to deliver you from the expectations of those who want to see you fail. Who want to remind you of your old darkness trying to put out your new light. The glory, the glory, the glory in your used to. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the next one. This is what the Lord says, okay? And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see, stand still. He didn't say sit, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Okay, he's going to show you his salvation. Stand, stand still. You don't have to deal with them. He didn't done that already. They don't know it yet. The glory is in your used to. This is to encourage you. Keep the press every time you get up. He's applied the fire to try you, to prove you. Don't you understand that each facet of him that you experience invites another trial? Oh, 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 yeah. Each situation that the Lord brings you out of, whether it's healing, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's prostitution, whether it's selfishness, whether it's fornication, whether it's masturbation, whether it's pornography, each facet of deliverance he brings you through qualifies you for another trial. Y'all think it stops? No. Graduation to another trial. Behold the goodness and severity. Behold the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You're going to get tried on every new revelation. Every time you get a new revelation, a new trial is coming. He's going to test if it's in you. It can be her. And the proving of you brings it into your heart. That's when it's in you. That's when you're fellowshipping of his suffering. Where you grow to not want him to remove the pain. But when you've grown up, you grow to understand the pain. He is readying you for himself. He don't need no soldier he got to take out of the fight. Have you ever seen people, even in some movies where somebody they uh, hurt, or they killed somebody they love and tears start to fall, but they got angry and they were slaying. Why tears were slaying? That's where the message came forth, cry and fight. Cry and fight. The glory is in your used to. So men, <laughs> how about I say it? Sorry, like Denzel Washington. Next time, one of them over there running their mouth talking about, oh, I remember when that dude used to do this. Just wake up and say, my man, glory. Same ways like guys with you sisters. When they get to talk about what you used to, that's my girl there. Talk about what you used to. Because when they look at you now, they have to say she used to. Glory is in it. 
I'm going to post this video. And all of you who feel led, it can be a three to five minute video, five minutes or less. Everywhere you see it to post underneath it. It will be on Facebook. It will also be on uh, YouTube. Testify of anything the Lord has brought you from. And don't do it with shame. Don't do it with shame. The enemy hides in shame. And he loves to rob him of his glory. The glory is in your used to. Wink at him. She used to do this. My girl. Used to. Brothers. Oh, that dude used to do this. My man. Used to. He's glory. He's glorified. Because from faith to faith and glory to glory. And in the end, when we see him, we will be like him. And that is only for those who have partaken in the fellowship of his suffering. The glory is in what you used to do. What you used to be. How you used to think. How you used to walk. How you used to talk. How you used to treat people. What you used to do with your body. What you used to put in your body. The glory of God is in what you used to be. Hold up what you used to be like a banner. For it glorifies the Lord thy God. Take this message before the Lord. Glorify him. Share your messages and hashtag it. My used to. No, a better hashtag. Hashtag it. Hashtag the glory in my used to. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9 11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace, be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.